This thing was literally at the dealership just days before I bought it. So there's a good chance that they know exactly what's going on with it. Let's go ahead and give them a call. Thank you for calling Jaguar Land Rover. How may I direct your call? Hey, can I please speak with Land Rover Service? One moment, please. Land Rover Service. Speaking, are you calling to schedule an appointment? No, I actually just bought a car that was serviced regularly at your dealer. It looks like it was there recently. Just want to see if you have any information as to why it was brought in for service last. Let me see if I can look that information up. May I please have the last date of the VIN? Yeah, sure. It's Beta Alpha 6. Checking our database now, sir. Would you mind being placed on hold for one moment? Yeah, absolutely. Hello, sir. Thank you for holding. It appears the last time the car was at our dealership, our technician recommended the vehicle required an engine replacement. Notes indicate customer declined, vehicle was taken in as trade. No way. Do you have a quote on it? Like, how much does that cost? And is there any other information as to why it needs an engine? Let me check for you, sir. Unfortunately, the tech didn't write any additional information, but the quotation for a complete engine replacement is... $24,623. Ah, uh, finding a solid secondhand Range Rover at this point seems like an impossible feat. For a car that costs over $100,000 new, you can pick these up super cheap at salvage auction for a few thousand, and in some cases just a few hundred dollars. And they're not even salvaged. This one has a clean title and an even cleaner history. You see, these cars end up becoming mechanically totaled. The cost to repair one generally will outweigh the value of the car itself, or so a dealership might tell you. Just a few months ago, we bought this Range Rover for $1,400, and even though it was completely dead when delivered, we still got it running and driving for just 100 bucks in auto store supplies and a few shade tree tactics. Now, this old range was still running on borrowed time, and with over 200,000 miles, it was mechanically tired, electronically confused, but you would never guess it was so terrible because of its aluminum body and timeless styling. Make no mistake, this Silver Range Rover was absolute junk, but there was something charming about it. I couldn't help but want another. Bidding just off of these photos, I won this 2011 Range Rover Supercharged. While it might look similar to the old silver one, it's a complete departure. The materials are nicer, the displays are all digital, and it has a 5 liter supercharged V8 with over 500 horsepower. I know, buying a Range Rover listed as a non-runner with mechanical damage totally sight unseen in another state might seem like a stupid gamble, but with a winning bid of only $3,850, how can I lose? Well, let me show you how. Rich, what do you think? This is nice. Nicer than the last one. A lot last, nicer than last the last one. one. Turd. <laughs> this one is supercharged, man. I love these huge brakes. I think this has like 510 horsepower when it's running. Yep. If it ever runs, do you think it'll get running? Doubt it. Doubt it. There, Sam. There's, a, there's a spot where? Right there. You can look where my finger is. That's not an oil. Look, I'm gonna touch it. Lick it. Let me hold it. Oh, I got it. Is this a, oh, there is a little drip. That's water. That's just, Rich, that's water. Sure. There's no drips on this thing. All it's right. clean as could be. You can drink yourself. Now look, these pop out. Look, those oh, you have the come out. Oh, oh, that. That's really you cool. Think they work? I got it. Come on. This car was, uh, this car was well taken care of. Really decently looking. Look at this, no, no rust, nothing. But really clean under there. Rich, what? you're in my shot. Sorry, man. All right, with Rich out of my shot, and Rich, you're in my shot again. Oh, sorry. And the uh, BMW off the back, it's time to get to work. We're gonna get underneath the hood, see if we can jump the battery. Just over here, let me see what's going on over here real quick. Oh. What are you trying to do? Not in your shot, am I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rich. I'm gonna jump up on your trailer, is that okay? And then I'll uh, put the battery jumper on it. No battery. This interior is not, oh, Sam, it smells nice in here, Sam. Yeah, it does. Damn. All right, hood. Let's see here. Uh-oh. Already got the first weird thing, like the hood's already popped. Hopefully it is popped and it's popped. Oh, I don't want to fall off. All right, got this? Okay, got it. It's a metallic black, Rich. I don't know if you know this thing. Nice. So, oh, it's open. Perfect. Right. It's right here. And there. Okay, so the battery's all the way over there. Oh, look, they even left. Look, 
they left a bunch of screws undone. So this is the blower, right? Looks like it. And then, geez, I'm really, you know, kind of just left this guy. Yeah, yeah all, all the belts are bunch there. Bunch of stuff out. Yeah, all of the belts even off it, so that's why it won't run. Right? Yeah, they took the belt off. That's the simple reason why. No, that belt's all messed up. Look at that. Well, they took it off. It slipped off. Yeah. It didn't slip off. The dealer should... Well, look, they, oh, look. Well, the well, timing well, covers well, off the well, car. Well, they took it off. They yeah. expect it, I'm assuming. All right. I'm going to run around the other side where okay. the battery is. Okay. Ooh. No, I'm holding it. I got you. Yeah. Timing covers off. Man. All right. Here we go. Now, this is going to be fun, Rich. It is. Look how much power I have in my hands right now. For this hand, if I let go of this hand, it's going to drop on Sam's head. And I have all the power in the world right now, but you know what? Sam's a good guy. And hopefully nothing blows up in my face when he tries this. I hear something. All right, hold on. It's powering up in here. It is? Okay. All right, I see the air vent flaps closing. Now they're opening again, and I'm still holding this in my hand. So what's happening is that the jumper pack's going out. So Rich, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> Rich is going under the hood. He's going to hit the boost button. When he does, I think the electric parking brake is on. And look, I'm surprised they didn't mark this car as a biohazard, but it's because there's strawberry jam right there. Man, always fun to see what you get when you buy sight unseen. All right, it's boosted. We're going to go. We're going to hit this button. We're going to get it. It's not. All right, here we go. Oh, it's off. Parking brake's off. Park. Set it right there. Now it's gone. All right, we're going to shut this down. All right, you ready? All right, you tell me to keep it, which, the wheel, whatever way. Okay. How are the... All right, yep. It was a piece of junk that Sam picked up. Just let it go. Just let it go? Yeah, because you're going to get stuck right here if you don't okay. roll back. Here we go. Get... I'm going to just close this and let it go. You're going to let it go? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you still got it, but it popped out. All right. Had worse happen. Now that our mechanically damaged Range Rover has turned into a front end damaged Range Rover, it did take out grill around there and the uh, the trim. Same thing on the other side. This fog light cracked and is hanging out. Ah, Rich, it's all your fault. You laughed I on top of it. That was a good hearty laugh. All right, well, let's go tow it up closer to the barn. Check out what's wrong with this thing. Rich, how'd she ride? She great, man. Nice and quiet. Like, easy. like most other Range Rovers, right? Well, this is a Range Rover. This is how a Range Rover naturally travels under the power of yeah, another vehicle. Feel, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nice though. Dude, these bars are low. Yeah, they are really yeah, low. I mean, that is. It's not like a pickup where you got to step real high. But I will tell you that there's definitely some air let out of the suspension. But it's not sitting uh, completely low in all four corners, and that's a really good sign. Kind of uh, not like our Phaeton 12-cylinder here that is slammed to the ground in the front. There's definitely an issue with the air suspension on this thing. But yeah, if you look at this, I don't, th uh, don't want to say anything because an air suspension is a weak system of these cars, but I'd venture to bet that once we get power to it and get this engine running, this thing's going to come to life. It's going to air up a little bit, and the stance will be real nice. Now, one of the first things I noticed when we pop the hood of this car to try and jump start it, you've got all the fasteners just sitting here and hoses off. We've got the front timing cover is off right there. Intake, 
tube to the throttle body off. I'm guessing there might be another uh, air box that goes here or something just completely missing. Uh, the top of the supercharger, there's no screws in it. This could just be lifted off. Someone has been in here. The big question is why they've been in here and what is wrong with the engine. Now the good news is, is that I spotted all those missing components right back here in the hatch. Uh, here's our intake tube right here that goes to the throttle body. Right there is our timing cover. And uh, whoever put this stuff in, you know, because this is oily, was kind enough to put this cloth down. Air box. This is the uh, AC filter housing. We've got a gasket of some sort here. That's a metal fuel line, a bunch of fasteners. And I mean, just look at how well the interior of this car was taken care of. It. It's really incredible. This is such a mint car, but unfortunately seeing these parts back here, seeing that somebody abandoned the job halfway through tells me that uh, our engine is probably catastrophically damaged. That doesn't mean we can't fix it. I'm really, really hoping we can, but I mean, just again, look at, Look at the condition of everything back here. This was a mint supercharged Range Rover that cost literally a fraction of what you would pay at a dealer. To try and make more sense of our strange Range Rover situation, I hopped online and pulled a Carfax report. And what I found inside was absolutely astonishing. This is the sort of history you dream of buying when looking at a used car, not one you'd ever expect to come from a salvage auction. Zero accidents, one owner, and religiously serviced 30 times at a franchise Jaguar Land Rover dealer. And 15 of those trips we're in the first 10,000 miles. Most of the time, the owner of this car had the oil change between four and 6,000 miles. But quite possibly, the most important piece of data on this history report was the car's last service at the Jaguar dealership and its odometer reading at 95,838 miles. The same exact odometer reading the car has today, sitting right here. This car was never driven out of the dealership. It had to have been towed out to the auction and now to me. Now, even though I enjoy digging up a car's history and seeing how it was treated during its life, that still does not help us with what's going on underneath the hood. We were checking things out earlier. It was all foreign to me and that's because it's totally different from the Range Rover that we previously worked on. You see, that was a 4.4 liter BMW based engine. A few years later, Land Rover transitioned to a Jaguar powered drivetrain. And then a few years after that, it was revised to what we have here, a five liter supercharged V8 with 510 horsepower. It's very similar to the same exact engine that is being used in today's supercharged Range Rover. That's why an engine replacement still costs so much. That old 4.4 liter BMW engine, you could literally buy one under $1,000. Where this one at the dealership, five figures. Lucky for me, my good friend Nick Smith is a Land Rover Jaguar tech. He used to work at the dealership and now he works for an independent mechanic specializing in these cars. He's been in a bunch of five liter engines. And hopefully he's got the right guidance to figure out what we've got going on here. Sam, I told you, man, I warned you about these cars. They are expensive when they break, man. There's a reason that dealer charged $20,000 for that engine job. It's a lot of labor and the parts are expensive, man. Now, you never know what's actually gonna be wrong with one of these things because there's a lot of different things that can go wrong. It could have a, a little tappity tap noise from the tappets because they actually do wear out in these motors. It's weird. In 2014, they revised them. Nice new part, you're good to go. Since you still have an early model, also in 2014, they updated the timing chain guides to have a stainless steel button because the timing chain guides are actually made of aluminum and the tensioners are stainless steel. Rubs on it, it can rub right through that. And then you gotta, you, you're either gonna have a noise or it could possibly jump time like yours might have done and kiss the valves. You never know, but first things first, you need to turn the motor over by hand. See if it spins. If it spins, then things aren't that bad. We can probably save this motor. It's just gonna take a bit of labor, a bit of time. Then after after you turn it over by hand, four scope those cylinders, man. Like you need to pull spark plugs out and stick a camera down there. See if you can see any marks on the pistons. If you see any marks on those pistons, then more than likely your pistons have hit the valves. We gotta pull the head off and do a head job, make sure there's nothing cracked in there. You never know. We're really not gonna know what's actually wrong with this until you open it up and until we get in there. But on the bright side, you got me. 
I do this all the time. Taking Nick's advice here, the first thing I did was turn the crank, and in my opinion it felt great. When spinning an engine by hand, you should feel some resistance. The resistance will build during the compression stroke and get easier afterward. It shouldn't be overly loose or too tight. The good news here is it's not locked up. However, there is a strange audible clicking noise that just doesn't sound right. We're off to a good start knowing that the Range Rover will turn over by hand, but we're gonna to wanna to take it one step further here. To remove our coil packs, all we have to do is undo the torque screws that are holding the coil packs in place. There's one on each coil pack. Once the screw is undone, you just unclip the wiring harness off to the side, and then the coil itself, it should just pop right out of place. all four of the spark plugs out on the driver's side here. They all look pretty decent. Now we're gonna switch cameras to our uh, boroscope camera here. This little snake will go down where the spark plugs were at and it's powered through Wi-Fi to my cell phone and I'll be able to see the top of the pistons and we can decide uh, whether anything was damaged on this side. This side uh, I'm feeling a little bit more confident about because the timing cover is still on it. Of course we want to check everything to be safe so let's switch over to the boroscope camera. What I just discovered on the scope camera in there was extremely strange. The first few cylinders actually looked awesome. Really excellent. I didn't see anything majorly wrong and then a few cylinders down well, I definitely spotted an issue. And it's something that many mechanics I'm sure have seen before, but given the circumstances of this car, how it was delivered to us, how the engine bay was all disassembled, it makes little sense. It's really strange. And well, I'm gonna try and make sense of it, and tell you exactly what's going on in our next video. I know, I know you wanna know what I saw, and if you really must, well, you can take a look on Instagram. I'll post a picture from the Indoscope. You go right here, click the link in the description box below. But the picture only tells part of the story here. This is one of the most interesting cars I've ever bought at the salvage auction. One of the cheapest at only $3,850. And if you like the prospects of having a super cheap, supercharged Range Rover, well, be sure to hit that like button. Guys, I gotta thank each and every one of you for watching today, and I'll catch you very soon.